Hello and welcome to the inaugural video for Shaman's Way. I wanted to welcome you into my space, my home, and in order to say hello to you, the first thing that I want to do is light some of my homemade smudge for you. So my favorite place to find smudge bowls, unless you have, you know, a good friend who is a potter or something along those lines, is I like to repurpose and reuse things. So I am a secondhand store person. So this little one came from a secondhand store. I make all my own smudge. I use sage that I harvest myself, different plants that I harvest myself and resins and sometimes essential oils. The key for me is to use a coffee grinder dedicated specifically to smudge because it is a flavor that one does not necessarily need in one's tea or coffee or whatever you are grinding. It also lights incredibly easy as you know you can absolutely see that it's blowing beautifully and glowing well and the smoke is coming off uh, because it is ground so fine. The other nice aspect of this is that I don't have to use any carbon uh, so I don't have to use a charcoal bit because I actually can't stand the smell of that. But if that's your thing go for it. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to smudge my friends. I want to clear my friends. So this is my drum and I'll talk a little bit more about that but I just want to cleanse it. Give it a good clearing as we would with ourselves, right? When we smudge, we smudge ourselves and we smudge the rattles. I'm going to talk about the different types of rattles. So we want to smudge all of the rattles. Now I know I'm wearing jewelry and as a rule I wouldn't wear any jewelry um, because it is from my perspective to smudge is to smudge as purely or as clean uh, without uh, acumens or anything else uh, and to smudge the pure body and then put your incumbent or your jewelry on over top. So I'm going to talk about smudge fans and I'm going to talk about um, blindfolds but I just want to make sure it's all clear because I this is like us right we want to make sure that when we're going into the spirit world that we're going in cleansed and clear that's really very important for us we have all of these lovely articles smudged and the smudge will just go out on its very own and the amount you use obviously is going to determine the amount uh, that's going to burn. I know that there are smudge sticks. You can purchase smudge sticks if that's up your alley. I prefer to mix and match my own scents and there will be a time I'm sure that I will share with you what I think about what to put in smudge or even make some smudge in front of you and show you what I like to do. This is basically the very simple tools of shamanism. So we are working first of all with the drum. Now the drum was the first instrument that I was introduced to as a means or an opportunity to shamanically journey. Many of you listening know what the shamanic journey is. However, for the brand new ears, let me tell you that the shamanic journey is utilized as a way of communicating or traveling with spirit. We are a very visual society. So the expectation is that we are going to see something. And many people do see things. That's very true. However, there are other ways of journeying. There are ways of receiving messages. So you get that kinesthetic message or that, that knowing, that capital K knowing. There's also auditory journeys. So if you are hearing something, you get the messages through your ears. And that, that also is. There are people who have sensations in the body. So that's the, the kinesthetic journeys. 
But so I'm going to focus on the visual journey because that is what the primary focus is for most North Americans who are visually focused. The drum is used or referred to as the horse or in the Sami traditions. It is a, um, the reindeer. This is my old drum and he has been with me now for 23 years. So he has seen many, many drummings many 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 journeys many ceremonies many rituals many just for the hell of it drumming out in the middle of uh, nowhere so the drum is very important now if you have a drum or if you don't have a drum and you would like to uh, in, you know encourage one to come into your life one of the most I think forgotten parts of drum relationship because it is a relationship is to wake up the drum. We use gentle touch, we use uh, the, uh, the drum beater as well. So we then wake that spirit up. Let the spirit of the drum know that we're coming. Let the spirit of the drum know that we are willing and wanting to engage with its ability to allow us to travel from this place to that place, from this place to there. What is on your drum is entirely up to you. This drum was made and gifted to me and the gentleman who gifted it to me was a former teacher. He has since passed on and he asked me to choose uh, from a series of six pictures which one I, I liked the most. And that's the unfortunate part about being intuitive because as soon as he did that, I was like, oh, he's making me a drum. So there was the surprise was gone. But I picked the Celtic fire dragon. It was the most appealing of his tradition, his uh, drawings. And uh, he really, he was a Welsh man and studied Welsh and his his reality, his tradition was in the 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 um, Celtic. So that is my drum. That's the story of my drum. And I have um, had many, many experiences with this particular being and this particular spirit. I really love my drum. I love all my drums. It's important if you're going to do this work that you maintain a relationship with the spirits that work with you. And that includes the drum. The drum is a living being from my perspective. That's what I know from speaking to my drums. The other one I want to talk about are rattles. I like to have a variety of rattles, but that's just because I utilize them for my healing work. And when I have the need for different types of sounds, these are the needs for different rattles. If you're unfamiliar with the rattle, if you've never used the rattle in shamanic work before, it is a way of awakening the spirit. Different from the drum, which creates a vibration that is felt, as is mostly reported, felt throughout the entire body, the rattle, in my perspective, has a different viewpoint. The rattle is often associated with places that are very humid, places where the drum wouldn't work, or if they didn't have a drum, perhaps hollowed out logs or various other items from nature would provide the percussion sound or the beat sound or whatever that sound is. Rattles are utilized to awaken the energy of the body. For me, it is because it's associated with countries that are very moist. It is then for me associated with water. If I use the rattle on the body or to call in the directions, it is a very distinct sound. So I hope this comes through on the video for you on the sound, but there's very different sounds 
and you have to choose whatever sound feels right for you and some people don't like rattles some people don't like the sound of rattles uh, for some people it really hurts their ears others it jars their their energetic reality so if that's you don't panic you're not alone not everybody can utilize or like a, a rattle so this is the biggest one that i have That's, this one I use in public if I am utilize, big, using a big ceremony or in a big ceremony where there's going to be a lot of rattles and I lead or control the length of time that we use the rattle to call in each of the directions, east, south, west, north, upper world, lower world. And so the larger rattle is easier to sound. What I like about this rattle is that it has a lovely dip in it and what i have used over the years in my extraction work or my healing work is a rattle over top of the body so if the rattle is gently moving over the body we have the sensation or the intention energetically that the rattle is rain washing away whatever is on the body. The other part of the rattle where the drum will, from my perspective, my, my shamanic eyes, what it does is it vibrates the body and kind of shakes things loose. I like the rattle because it works very much on the external, the what I just call the exoskeleton, those armors, those barriers, those boundaries that we erect, you know, whether it's consciously or whether it's unconsciously. The rattle has the way of breaking those things up. So if I find in my body, if I'm bringing up my spirit song or I'm just rattling for myself, if I'm breathing, and there's a place in my body where I can't get breath, then I will take, you know, a gentle rattle and I will gently move in the spots that may feel like they have uh, more of a challenge to bring in sound or more of a challenge to bring in energy, more of a challenge to bring in breath. So this is just one way of utilizing a very beautiful friend, a very beautiful relationship as another way of bringing you into self, bringing you back into spirit. So that is one of the aspects of the rattles. So we have a gentle, we have a beautiful rain sounding rattle, and then the large sounding rattle. One of the other parts of the rattle is that it is able to be used very similar to the drum as a means of journeying. And there are some people who appreciate the sound of the rattle to journey with and there are some people who do not. On the Shaman's Way website, you can download a rattle track as well as two drum tracks and figure out whether or not you like the sound of the rattle to, drum, to journey to, prefer the sound of the drum, or you like both. I personally really like both. I also really like to journey to the didgeridoo. And one day, I'll even learn how to play it. Not today, but I will actually learn one day. Another part of what I find a very practical tool for shamanic work are the feather fans. Now this is an owl feather fan and I know that I've strongly encouraged you in my podcast so I'm going to strongly encourage you as we sit together if you find a bird of prey, if you find a feather uh, and it is from a roadkill, which is what this particular feather fan came from. Kindly do yourself the favor and the fa uh, and take it to Fish and Wildlife or whatever the equivalency is in your area. Find out whether need you whether or not you need a certificate to own it. In Alberta, you need to have certificates if it's a bird of prey. So for hawks for owls, for uh, falcons. You cannot own any type of eagle unless it has been given to you. The rules are, are yours to figure out, but beware. 
The reason I tell you this is because it is a part of the legal aspects of doing work within the parameters. You can also, but you can also go to any craft store. You can purchase turkey feathers. You can purchase all kinds of different uh, feathers and you can paint them. You can create your own feather fan. Making feather fans is incredibly simple. Uh, you just need a little bit of creativity and if you don't trust your creativity, you can, I'm certain there are, uh, you know, at least, at least one video, maybe even like a thousand videos if you look on how to make your own feather fan. And some of them are fancy, some of them are not. Some of them are big, some of them are not. I have ones for single feathers all the way up to the all the tail feathers of a of an owl. So I this is my particular feather fan that one of them that I love to use. And have augmented in many ways. And if you don't have someone to teach you, you you have to fly by the seat of your pants and you know you have to come up with creative ideas and some people are far more creative and artistic than I am, all the power do you, and you can create much more beautiful uh, objects than I can, all the power to you. So well, all I'm saying is if it is a labor of love for you and you're using it in your ceremonies and your journeys, then it is perfect. Never let anyone tell you what you do is anything but perfect. Now, from the feather fan, why do we use a feather fan? Well, we would smudge that, the feather, the smudge over top of your body or down the arms or in the, in the particular area or region of where you are. I also like to use a feather fan if I am clearing my house. So I've lit my smudge and I clear the house. I move the feathers accordingly. They also make very powerful tools for swooshing down somebody's body and just releasing some of the weight, the energetic weight or the tendrils of energy that are stuck to us. That is a very good tool as well for the feather fan. Generally it is used as a means of fanning another person or fanning the smudge over yourself or another person. Don't forget, you know, to do the back of the body. It's just as important as the front of the body. In the reality of journeying, one of the aspects that is important is the use of a bandana. It is important to use a bandana because it helps you to give the message to the brain that the visual cortex, the part of the brain that is responsible for picking up visual cues within the environment can actually relax. So it also cuts down the can I just take a peek, people? The ones who want to lift up their, their bandanas if there is something going on. Oftentimes as you journey, you will hear other voices. You will hear perhaps choirs. You will hear trains even. Uh, and oftentimes we have physical sensations or we have heat or someone brushes us or touches us and they're not things to be frightened of. I'm not telling you that you that you can't freak out. That's entirely up to you. It's not my reality, but if that's yours, all the power to you. But the there are different types of eye covers. So my favorite is the bean bag. And I like the weight of it. I like the comfort of it. I like that there's nothing behind my head. Uh, this one is very comfortable for me um, and it, it doesn't weigh very much at all, but it is, it is very, very potent and it has a good feel to it. There are places where you can buy this particular brand, it's called Mindfold, and it is a particular blindfold that has holes cut into the uh, smoogy stuff whatever this is called, foam at the moment. And therefore you can open your eyes as you journey if it's, if it's important for you or if you don't like your eyes closed or the sensation of your eyes being held closed. Um, there is that part of it as well. 
The last one that I want to show you is a very, just a very simple, you know, uh, cheap store bandana that you can buy for a dollar or whatever in your neighborhood and fold it and fold it over, fold it over until, you know, it just makes a good bandana for you. Put it over your eyes, tie it behind the head and away that you go. You certainly can journey without using any type of uh, blindfold, but I would recommend that you don't uh, for the very simple reason that it gives your brain the opportunity to say, okay, I've had enough. So these are some of the very basic tools of shamanism and on the next time that we meet I will share with you some of the other tools that I have used over the years and what that would be like for you to utilize in your practice. And another one coming up will be the nine first stones of the medicine mill. Until next time, see you later.